Hello, I am Dr. Ajay Rora and today we'll be discussing the safe and effective ways of giving intravitreal injections easily. So the drugs can be given to the posterior segment by topical drops, by subconjunctal injections, intravitreal injections, subretinal injections and supracolloidal injections. What we'll be discussing today will be the way we give intravitreal injections. This is extremely important because each one of us has to give intravitreal injections sometime or the other. And these days they have become so important in various conditions because of the availability of anti-vegers. So this is an easy way of giving intravitreal injections. If you see in this particular video, you will find that the patient was not able to fixate, was moving the eyeball very rapidly. So the only way to give an intravitreal injection would have been to fixate the globe with the forceps, measure the distance at which the injection has to be given. That means both my hands will get occupied and then give the intravitreal injection. So see how I did it differently. This, so this is the device which has got a semolina ring with another surface which has got uh, sorted water and it has got a hole which is located at about 3.75 millimeter. This is the other design of the same instrument. And the needle is entering through this opening into the vitreous cavity. And if you see carefully, this goes through a cylinder you know this is a needle with uh, th this is a hole in which the needle goes through because there is a thickness of the side arm so it works as a cylinder which means that once the needle goes inside it cannot move in front which means it cannot damage the lens and hence produce a cataract or produce backwards that is it cannot damage the retina so having given the injections, we move the uh, side arm a little bit. When we come out, we see that the globe is quite nice, crystal clear. So we have, uh, you know, after a lot of work for a, for a few years, we finally boiled down to these two simple examples. And if you look at it, you find how easy it is to do it. But yes, it took some time to develop these devices and you can give them safely because you do not need anything to fixate the globe, anything to measure the distance from the limbus to give the injection. One single instrument does it all. Now you must remember that uh, while we, uh, we I've shown you the instrument, the basic technique, whether you use the instrument or you use a caliper to measure and give the injection, the basic technique and the principles remain common. Intravitreal injections must be given in the operation theater or the clean room because in the Indian scenarios it is not possible to give it in the OPD because of the possibility of infection. You must confirm and mark the eye. The surgeon must be scrubbed. The eye should be cleaned with 10% providin iodine from the outside and a topical anesthetic drops like paracan drops should have been put. Then you have to instill providonidine 5% into the conjunctival sac and uh, once that is done you clean and drape the eye and uh, go ahead with the injection. I normally inject anti vegfs in the upper temporal quadrant because that gets covered with the lid and I use a 30 gauge needle to inject through the device which I just showed you. The entry is oblique as I mentioned and because of this entry being oblique, there is hardly any leakage from the points of entry. At the end of the injection, try to measure uh, approximately the intraocular pressure. And if you think that the intraocular pressure is high, you must do an indirect ophthalmoscopy to rule out absence of central arterial pulsations. So this is just a diagram which shows how this device looks like on its undersurface. 
and how the hole looks like. And this is the other device and this shows us the distances at which uh, the injections has to be given in different age groups. So intravitreal injections of anti-VEGF, we can give Avastin or Bevacizumab, Ranibazumab, Aflibacep, Prolicizumab or Pagnetapine. The indications can be, um, there are multiple of them like a diabetic macular edema, proliferative diabetic retinopathy, macular edema because post branch retinal venous occlusion or the central retinal venous occlusions, wet age related macular degeneration, a PCV, cases of ROP, retinochoroidal tumors and granulomas. You may need to uh, avoid injections if the patient is hypersensitive to anti-VEGF. There is an uncontrolled hypertension or there is a recent history of stroke or coronary disease. Then there is a role for intravitreal anti-inflammatory drugs in cases of diabetic macular edema, macular edema post-vascular occlusions, post-operative cystoid macular edema, and cases of uveitis, we can give Triamcelon in the pavalva space, we can give it intravitreally, we can also give it supracoloidally and then the use of Ozodex. So whenever we have a case where there is inflammation post-surgery, it could either be TAS or it could be infection. It's very important for each one of us to be able to differentiate between TAS and endophthalmitis. If you have a hypopion, if the vision is uh, affected, if it is occurred within um, 12 to 24 hours, it is TAS, but if it is occurred longer, maybe in about three days, it is likely to be endophthalmitis. We will not go into the details of differentiating TAS and endophthalmitis in this particular video because I, I intend to bring up uh, a video on that very soon. So once you've decided that you want to give an intravitreal injections, then you have to choose uh, a gram-positive uh, intravitreal antibiotic and a gram negative. So normally we give vancomycin which is 1 milligram given in 0.1 ml and ceftazidine which is 2.25 milligram in 1 ml, 0.1 ml. Alternatively you could use vancomycin and amikacin and if you suspect a bacterial endophthalmitis you should um, inject simultaneously in dexamethasone or if you suspect fungal then you need to decide about um, Voriconazole versus Amphotericin B. So please remember that you should know the target dosage rather than the dilutional protocol because you may find one company's vial which may be of a stronger um, uh, <coughs> milligram concentration per vial and that you have to achieve the target concentration of 1 milligram in point similarly receptors hitting 2.25 mg and 0.1 mg. Now, it's been shown that over the period of last uh, 16 to 18 years, the vancomycin resistance has grown from uh, 4% to about 7%, while septus hitting resistance in the similar period has increased from 0 to about 60 to 70%. Therefore, it's very important to choose the right drug because if your drug is not going to be effective, there's no point injecting it, isn't it? You could alternatively use vancomycin plus amicacin and then uh, you can have dexamethasone injections if it is a bacterial endophthalmitis and a vericonazole or amphotericin B injection if it is a fungal endophthalmitis. These are the alternatives, especially in cases of <coughs> septicidine resistance like papercillin and tazobac. And you should again remember the final concentration of the drug of 225 micrograms. Then you have imipenem, which is a um, uh, pyrvapenem, and the dose is of 50 to 100 micrograms. 
So it's important to know the dosages, <coughs> have them stuck to uh, the, your OT and you should always, I repeat it again and again, try to remember the target concentration of any injection that you're going to inject. So thank you very much for patiently listening to me and I think intravitreal injections uh, can be given very easily. Each one of you must know how to give intravitreal injections and by using the appropriate dosage charts, you should be able to move ahead and give them very safely. Thank you for your kind listening. Thank you very much.